What's up, everybody? No matter what, Monday, I gotta matters. change my calendar. Have you, have you guys heard this song? You know, I'll play it when I go change my calendar. This feeling. And when it comes to fear, you can either forget everything and run. Hello, 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 look, hello, look, I'm waving to people on this thing, whoop, whoop. It's not how you fall. It's how you get back up. That's what's up. What's going on, everybody? Hey, Andrew, you're asking about this trick. Oh, so juicy. I do have it. It's in stock. It's 30 bucks, Andrew. If you're interested, let me know. I only have one left. We'll put it right there. Oh, the name, oh, this song? Yeah, I'm glad you asked about this song, Micah. It's a, there's a guy called Pitbull. And uh, it's I Believe I Will Win World Anthem by Pitbull. It got released, uh, I think, yesterday or the day before it just released. Yeah, you can just ask Alexa. If you guys have Alexa, Alexa, play World Anthem by Pitbull on repeat. So now you guys can have it if you have a collection. Movie songs from I Believe That We Will Win, World Anthem by Pitbull on go. Amazon Music. There you go. You know what spreads faster than any virus? So good. Hey, our guest today, Jonathan Levitt. He's fantastic. I've known Jonathan for a million years. He's a consultant. He's an actor. We'll get into that. And uh, I don't know if uh, Adam, if you're on here yet, I'll wait for the fun announcement of what Jonathan has done. I'll wait for Adam's uh, name to come on. I have a fun magic trick to show you guys. I, 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 all weekend I was training a little, a new little friend of mine. Um, it's a little tiny one of these clips. It's been so much. I've been so much, so much. I've been doing so much training with him. I've taught him how to do a magic trick. We'll uh, we'll do that in a few minutes. It's gonna be good. It's uh, May 18th. Magic app alive at almost 11. Episode 43, guys. 43, 43 episodes in a row. Thank you so much for. Thanks for watching, uh, Jay Teeman. Uh, kudos for you for watching. Hello, Garris ladies and gentlemen. Or, I guess, ladies. Garris ladies. Look at that. That's working at the WC Fields Bar at the Magic Castle. It's just, after this, make sure you go follow at Jonathan Levitt. Um, it's going to be good. Got a little something to show you with cards and my trained little thing. Hello. And uh, got some good guests lined up this week. A billion dollars? Dave has spent a billion dollars. That sounds about right. Maybe just under a billion dollars. So fun, everybody. I had really good hot dogs over the weekend. Anybody else have really good food over the weekend? There's a place in North Hollywood called Vicious Dogs. And uh, Adam, there you are. We, our special guest here today, Adam, is Jonathan Levitt. Bottom line, no matter what. Face everything and rise. Face everything and rise. This is my candle. Oh, my candle's going out. It used to be a three wicker. Now it's only a one wicker. Hold on. Let me uh, see if I can not burn myself. Hold on one second. We'll get into some fun stuff. Hey there, everybody. Welcome to Matt. 
Magic Apple Live at 11. It is May 18th, Monday. Happy Monday. It's a little bit of a gloomy day here in California, or at least in Los Angeles. It's a little rainy, but it's nice. It's nice little sprinkles. And uh, we got our guest here, Jonathan Levitt, coming on in a few minutes, who was one of the consultants. Are you ready? Are you ready, Adam? I mean, we all appreciate consultants, but Adam will be super excited. He was a magic consultant on Burt Wonderstone. <laughs> With a guy you may have heard of, Steve Carell. And, of course, Steve Buscemi and Jim Carrey, we know them. But Steve Carell, he was one of the magic consultants on Burt Wonderstone, along with a magic consultant on Now You See Me. He's been in the X-Files. This guy has kind of done all of it. So, episode 43, guys. Thanks for watching. I'm going to show you a magic trick. Let me move Jonathan out of the way for a moment. Uh, I'm going to show you guys a magic trick that I've been training. This I know this sounds kind of silly. But I've been training this little clip, alligator clip, all weekend. I've been in uh, isolation with him. I've been training him to do some magic. And I'll show you exactly what I mean here. Uh, we have a deck of cards, of course. We love the card tricks. So, fun little magic trick to do over this new platform we've got. Uh, I've just recently watched Aussie Wins mag uh, Instagram Live. So if you guys have a chance, go go follow Aussie Wind. He's one of David Blaine's consultants, an amazing performer. He's now convinced me, when you shuffle a deck of cards in front of an audience, to do it face up so you can really see all the cards changing faces. So you know it's not a funny, weird magic shuffle. And uh, anyway, you get the idea. 52 cards in this deck of cards. One is gonna get chosen. See, shuffling face up, like Ossie said. Um, so, uh, and now normally I need to have somebody choose a playing card, but of course we can't do that right now. So, uh, if I could have somebody uh, name a number after I count to three, somebody name a number, we'll use that playing card. So, one, two, three, name a number between one and 50. First person that does it. And if it's one of my Garris people, I maybe won't use them because I don't want you guys to think that it's fixed. Um, ten! All right, number ten. Ooh, Melody's so close. Ten. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. The King of Spades. Now, here's the fun thing. The King of Spades will be the card that we're going to use that I've trained. There, this little guy. I've trained this little guy to find the King of Spades. Now, this card's a little too big for him. So I'm going to let him look at the King of Spades, get a good idea from it. Jonathan, I'm going to call you in a few minutes, I promise. I'm going to finish up this little magic trick. So now, we've got the King of Spades chosen. We'll place this here. But I've got a mini deck of cards. A little mini deck. Somewhere inside this deck is the King of Spades. This deck goes... In here, hold on one moment. Inside here. Now this little trained alligator clip is going to go inside that bag and hopefully find the king of spades. Mix them, mix them, mix them, mix them, mix them. All right, guys. Here we go. Here we go. I believe you will find it. Jump around. Jump around. Find it. Find one. Find it. Find it. Oh. He got one. Look at that, ladies and gentlemen. The king. Oh, okay. Um, not the king of spades. Uh, can you? How about stop embarrassing yourself? We trained for this all weekend. Can you grab another one, please? That'd be great. There it is. Oh, he got it. There it is. The king of spades. The little amazing trained alligator. Such a fun little card trick. It works perfectly over this platform, as you can see. That's called Alligator. Clever name. Very old school, but not done. Nobody does this trick. I think it's great. It's, I don't know, 16, 17 bucks. So fun. Very clever. Any card. Very, very nice. All right. Enough of me. Right here, Magic Apple Live, episode 43. I'm very excited for our guest. I'm going to plug in my headphones for a moment. Alexa. Volume down. We're going to do this. I have understand. Alexa, volume two. Hold on, guys. This is the... Is that my clippers hat here? Okay. Now, if we're ready, let's see if we can get 
our very special guest on, the one, the only, Jonathan Levitt. Let's see if I can give a request to him. We're going to talk movies. We're going to talk magic. We're going to talk Magic Castle. Oh, it doesn't look like he's on just yet, but that's okay. Jonathan. Hold on. It's going to be worth it, guys. And this week... Um... Hmm. He's not on, but I can't call him because if I call him, I'm going to lose you guys. So I'm going to use the Magic Apple phone, the Magic Store on the second floor phone. We'll give him a little ring. Of course, I can't get his number. Oh, maybe I already called. Maybe I, from this morning. Uh, you've never been to the Magic Shop? you got to come one of these days. Um, geez. Let me try. Is Jonathan on here? Hold on a second. John. Wait. Our difficulties are technical. Jonathan. What if I, if I, if I minimize this, do I lose you guys? All right. If I lose you, come right back. There. Whoa. You can pause. Whoa. Anyway, uh, we got, uh, so Jonathan Levitt's going to come on here in a moment. We will, we will see him in a second. And tomorrow, we're going to do a bunch of fun magic. I'm going to show you guys some more magic tricks, teach you a little something that'll be fun. And then on Wednesday, this Wednesday, the, 19th, uh, the 20th, we've got Justin Wilman's going to come back on to talk about Magic for Humans 3. He was one of our first guests when we started Magic App Alive at 11. He's going to come back this Wednesday, the uh, the 20th, to chat more about it. Let me see if Jonathan's here yet. And that'll be so fun to talk to him more about it, about his little son, about how things are going with that. Um, uh, things. Hey, guys. We're back. Who's here in your phone? Oh, Casey. Oh, oh, there you go. There we are. We got it. You're Casey. Now we're going to do it. We're going to make it happen. I see your name. How come it's not? Uh, let's do this. Go live. Here we go. Hey, we did it. We did it. And took a little minute. Casey, you're here. Thanks for your help. Ladies and gentlemen. If we all count to four together, one, two, three, four, hey. boom. Hey, there you are. You look like that guy. Man, that's me. Oh, although this guy looks a little more clean shaven than the guy I'm seeing live right now. Uh, you are looking at quarantine Levitt. Wow. So some people, I know we talked about it yesterday, some people like Jim Carrey and Kevin Hart aren't shaving since this started. Have you not shaved in like 60 days and that's all you got there? This is six months. <laughs> Very nice. Well, good for you. Then save all that money in shaving cream and stuff. Uh, how's everything going? Oh, I just dumped that in wax. Oh, gross. Gross. Uh, how are you doing? I mean, we just talked yesterday, but all of our friends out here didn't know we chatted. Um, oh, that is gross. Wax. Ugh. Um, are you, you're very busy, right? You're a very busy guy. Earwax or, earwax or regular wax? No, regular wax. I have a three-wick candle, and now it's waxy everywhere. Gross. I thought that was a, I thought that was a mug. Gosh. I thought you made a mug. I was going to ask you how, why you made a mug of my <laughs> It's a little candle. Anyway, hey, thanks for coming on. Um, to everybody that's, uh, that's new to Magic App Alive or haven't met Jonathan before, um, you know, we, I've had like a, a magician and an actor on, and then I've had Tony who's a consultant and a magician. If you, if someone visits the, your website, uh, it's pretty crazy because it says actor, magician, consultant, producer, host. I think, I think dentist is the next page. Car mechanic, I think is all of those things. That's, uh, you do every, you literally can do everything. Is that right? No, it's, uh, it's, it's, you know what? It's, it's not, I've, I've, I've had a, hmm. I've had a hard time. People say, well, what do you do? And I, I like to juggle lots of things in my life. So I- Oh, is juggler, is juggler, 
Is juggling one of the things on there? The one th but the interesting, the one thing I cannot do is juggle. <laughs> <laughs> that's funny well there's so i mean it's obviously this time is great to keep busy with all these different yeah. jobs and stuff. do you have a a favorite out of all of all of the hats and the, the balls that you're juggling do you have a favorite one is you have a favorite thing to do you know what it, you that's actually a really interesting question uh i uh, if you would it, it it's, i think it's changed it continues to change right so when i I've, I've been doing magic for 40 years right so when i but, you, out, but you're only you're only 36. How does... 35. Uh, when I went out to Los Angeles... Oh, by the way, big shout out real quick to Casey, my girlfriend, who just helped me. Yes. Wait, I, 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 Casey, you actually you helped me technologically get on... <laughs> and I think you know how happy that makes me. Um, all right. <laughs> anyway, so I, I uh, when I moved out uh, uh, 23 years ago... I came out with the intention of uh, pursuing an acting career. And from St. Louis, you moved from St. Louis, right? Colorado. From oh, Colorado. Okay. Yeah. Um, I had lived, I, li I, was, I, I moved to St. Louis when I was eight, went to college in Syracuse, and then went back, then went to Denver to work for a software company after college, and then I moved uh, to Los Angeles. So, so I, um, I came out and jumped into the world of acting out here and threw myself into acting classes and uh, had some, uh, was fortunate enough to get some good gigs and what have you. Very so, cool. Yeah, and so so that was my, you know, but, but magic was always there. I mean, I, I was, I went to the, mat I came out here on a Wednesday, July 4th, the hottest day in history, I think, in history of LA. Uh, <laughs> uh, Welcome to LA, 130 degrees. And I was like, what am I doing? What am I doing? And, and, uh, and uh, the next day, that was a Wednesday. Thursday, Andrew Goldenhurst, my old buddy from St. Louis, brought me to the Magic Castle. Wow. Monday, I became a member. So, so I became a member right away, and, uh, and I threw myself into the world of magic out here. And then, oh. and then, uh, and then I pursued my acting career out here, and, and, and then that turned into a host, television hosting career. So that's sort of where my life went. But I was still doing the magic and, and still loving it. And, right. and all. things kind of, you know, life takes you in different paths down different paths you know and i i um uh philo just joined that's awesome my friend in germany so so you know we takes me down different 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 paths and so i i uh i was doing the acting and doing and the hosting and that was really going well and and you know now that's slowed down a little bit i, I still love it and i still would love if somebody said we want you to be able, have a one hour uh, a series regular and a one hour drama i would jump on that uh right you know, but I but I've had some uh, lovely and amazing opportunities along the way, and it's been really great. So great, right. but I, I like doing this. But the, the, the problem is, in the business, as you know, things you have no idea how one thing is going to go one day to the next. So right. I, I I juggle a lot of things all the time, and then I well, went in to keep busy too. You have to keep busy. You can't just sit around, right? We got we don't. There's not enough time to sit around, so that's good. I mean, even when you're a consultant on the movies doing magic. You're still doing magic. You're still performing magic, right? You still have to show the actor, here's what this needs to look like. Let's go work for a few hours and hopefully make you look like what I just did. So you're still, in a sense, performing magic when you're a consultant, right? Right, and you do some consulting. You know, I do a lot of consulting with Tony Clark as well. Uh, right. Uh, several projects together, and which is amazing. Uh, and so you, 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 your mind gets into a creative headspace where you are you're not just performing magic or teaching magic, which I do a lot of now too, but you're, you're, you're creating, right? And you start to look around and you start to see everything in a different way, right? And you say, what can, mm -hmm. I, do? What can I do with that thing? And, and magic starts to pop up all around you. And so it, that's a whole other creative uh, process and that's really invigorating. So I-, I Yeah. Like, yeah, that's cool. What were you, what, what if, when you're when you're doing when you get the call from let's use Burt Wonderstone because I'm a big Jim Carrey fan. We've got lots of I love Steve Carell. That was, you know, on paper, a, a fantastic cast and a great movie, and it, it was fun. It was a fun movie. How, how what is that call? I mean, how do you get that job? There's lots of us magic people that would jump at that chance to be a consultant. And now some are very deserving to be consultants like yourself and Tony, and some guys are not. How did you feel when you got the call that you got to be the guy on Burt Wonderstone? Uh, I'm going to tell you, the, the, the I owe, I'm going to be honest, I owe most of 
the, the, the most interesting, fun things in my magic career, I owe to Jim Steinmeier. Yes. Uh, Jim, Jim, Jim has um, provided me opportunities that I, I, don't, I wouldn't have had otherwise. And so I'm uh, eternally grateful to Jim for that. And so Burt Wonderstone is one of them. So Jim was the uh, uh, consultant on that film in pre-production and working with the, the production prior to going into filming. And they needed somebody on set to work with the actors, to teach the actors, uh, work with the magic that Jim had created and potentially then come up with new ideas along the way. And so Jim suggested me, I had a meeting um, and closed the deal. So that's what we did. So awesome. I, I, I wish I could tell you that, that you know, I, I don't know what to say about that. It, it, I was yeah. like, <laughs> it's, not, it's not like an audition, right? It's not like you go out there and you pitch your tricks and then the other consultant pitches their tricks. I mean, in, in our little magic world, it's so small. Word of mouth goes so far in the world, but in magic, you know, it's a, it is a clicky little group and there's, you know, it's, which is good because then you trust the guys. If I needed a call, if I needed to go do this consulting on a commercial and I couldn't, you and Tony would be the first I go to. And I feel like that's enough. That's enough trusting for the production company to go, oh, well, if he trusts him, then we trust him, right? That's same with Jim. We had Robert Ramirez on last week and he does a lot of stuff with Jim as well. And he doesn't do a lot of consulting. He does a lot of live consulting to live productions. And he gives Jim a whole bunch of credit too, because his Jim's mind works a little differently than the rest of ours. Yeah. And, and, and better, but, but he, <laughs> but the, you know, I still went in and went producers and, you know, but, but yeah, having that credibility, having that reference was, you know, got me what 99.9% .9 of the way there. I'm sure. Uh, and I, and I'm, I'm very grateful for it. Uh, you know, I, I, I Jim uh, allowed me or gave me the opportunity to uh, perform as Howard Thurston. We recreated 20 minutes of Thurston stage act as Thurston. Uh, and that was done by Jim, directed by Jim. And, and that, yeah. you know, Celebra Cadabra uh, came, I hosted a show called Celebra Cadabra, uh, which I can say without stumbling. And, <laughs> and I believe, well, no, I know. Um, David Regal and Jim Steinmeier both referred me to them when they were looking for a host. And, and, you know, I, I, I honestly, honestly, you know, I've done, I, I've done, it's going to sound like I've got nothing on my own. Uh, I did a show in the Middle East. Tony Clark brought me in for that. Um, uh, you know, and then it works both, you know, I did a hip, we did hip hop Houdini. Uh, yeah. That's, that's what I was going to bring up next. Cause that's, that was probably, I mean, I saw both you and Tony throughout the weeks, you know, slowly getting more gray hair and slowly losing your hair over that show because that, I think, was probably your biggest challenge uh, to work with the Hip Hop Houdini crew because they wanted, they, their, their ideas were grand and, it's, and they wanted to do it all for real, right? It's tough to do, to have a magic idea that you want to do for real also on camera. Yeah, we had a, it was a big challenge for us. Um, I was going to say real quick, just to, before we get into that. Uh, and, uh, oh my gosh, I think Tim is on right now. Uh, so from the show, uh, that, the, from they had me for that, and then I, I went out to Tony cause we worked so well together, you know? So I, I would, so my point is that it, it kind of works both ways, right? We all are in this, we all help each other. We all refer each other. And, and it's that credibility, we build that credibility and, uh, with each other. And it's, it's really something, it's very heartening. So for me, uh, I work very hard on you know, getting jobs uh, and really keeping my name out there and keeping my skills up. Uh, but also I'm incredibly grateful for the, for the, uh, the generosity of others that, that you know, provide opportunities to me as well. Of course, so it's, yeah. It's really been amazing. And you, uh, you know, you and I go, we have stories too, uh, one of which we'll talk about offline. But yeah, so yeah, it's great. I'm really grateful. Yes. And hip hop, yeah. yeah, it was fun, actually. Yeah, it was, I, mean, I remember, I remember the, the, one of the ideas that, uh, in a nutshell, the magician, Hip Hop Houdini, was standing in front of a group of people and his clothes needed to change, right? His shirt needed to change or his hoodie right. needed to come off. 
And that was the that was the plan, right? The producer said, "This is what we want." He's got a green shirt on. We want it instantly to change to a red shirt. And there's magical ways you can do that with clever angles and maybe cutting. And they're like, "No, no, 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 one take." And so, without going into too much detail, you're on the ground, stra on b uh, below his legs, and Tony's fi thirty feet away, was ready to to make the magic happen. And I wish there was cameras on you guys, forget the, the celebrities, cameras on you guys for so much work for literally a three second magic moment. Wow. That was really funny to watch. I'll tell you, I think Tim, uh, I think Tim just logged on here. I don't want to call you out, Tim, but there is a back, there is a video. Uh, I'll share it with you later, my friend. I don't know. I don't, Tim, I don't know. Do you know what is, what's Tim's, uh, I'm just looking through the, the people Tim here. Deluxe. Oh, so, Tim King Timmy Deluxe. Yeah, he's here. Yeah. So uh, <laughs> we worked on the show together. But uh, so, and he was, you know, couldn't have done it without him. Uh, couldn't have done it without any, the whole crew was amazing. Actually, the crew was amazing. So, right, because you don't, you don't want to tell these big producers and directors, you can't tell them no, right? If they want to make the sweatshirt change, let's figure it out. It might cost right. more than you want. It might right. be a little more difficult, but let's do it. Let's, and it's also fun, right? Like, I'm sure you and Tony trial and errored a million different ways to make this trick an example happen. And it's kind of fun to fail a bunch of times, you know? It's oh, kind yeah, of, no, it's fun. It's a whole, like I said, you get in a whole weird creative process where you're just like you start firing on on all you know just start creating yeah. it's fine yeah. well i uh, create i mean everybody we you know we all like to do original magic and create stuff and failing is is part of the game and i remember and you'll remember this as soon as i say it years ago uh there's a move there's a theater up the street here in studio city called theater west they put on a sh an annual magic show called millennium magic i've done it tony's done it jonathan almost everybody in magic you know, it's an awful fundraiser for the charity. It's for the for the theater. It's great, and you're knee deep into your set, and there's probably 30 magicians as well as 300 regular people. And all the magicians, we kind of like to sit together to kind of, you know, we're not heckling, but we're throwing little jabs and clapping and whatever, and it's fun. And you had the spectator up, and the trick was going well, and the deck of cards was on your table here, the entire deck, and they've chosen a card, and you've made it, it's lost, it's impossible, there's no way you're finding this card, right, and you revamp how impossible it is, and you say, now, in my magic case, 330 people, including all of your peers, in my magic case, I've got something for you, I'm going to see if I can find the deck of cards, and the entire deck of cards falls off your case, goes all over the stage, and us as magicians know that's not part of the trick. And it was, I don't know, 30 seconds of silence, but funny silence, like we're laughing, and now the audience starts to realize, oh, this is not a bit, this is really happening. And you just stood there like, um, uh, and then you know, after a while you said the magicians in the audience know this is not part of the thing. Ultimately, you got out of it, but how fast was your brain moving to figure out, well, now I got to get this person's card and I got to do the magic. What, I mean, it's great to fail. What, we all know what you were thinking, but how do you, in a live audience, feel? Like, do, you, do you enjoy the mess up like that to make you human or where do you go next? Because next time you do that trick, that's in the back of your head. I have to tell you, you know, for me, I'm glad you bring it up. That was one of for me, one of the great moments that I've had. It was so funny. It was so great. And, we're, and this was five, six years ago, and we're still talking about it. And people that aren't super regulars or I'm not super friendly with will bring it up. And he will go, I was at that show. I remember that the briefcase fell. Oh, it was great. And then we relived this terrible and awesome moment for you. It was great. I wish, I wish, I wish that we had that on video and we don't. Yeah, right. Yeah. Oh, it'd be great. That moment, because what came out of that moment, there were really funny lines that came out of that moment. Because it was the, it was interesting. It was is the pause, right? It's the silence that you were <laughs> out of silence, and then all fine, these things just started coming out, right? It was funny. It was really, <laughs> yeah. and and it was like baseball, but it was also not, you know. And it was, and then and then we concluded with success, which was great. Um, right, the I, trick worked. Not really sure how it works, but we got it. <laughs> right. Well, and I, was, I also remember weeks later you were going to work your work in the castle, and you tried to recreate that moment, right? You then 
you then put the cards properly and on purpose made them fall on the tech counter or on the ground. And it didn't, I saw like the second or third version of it and it didn't, it felt fake. And even though you're a good actor, I don't know, it just, it wasn't where it should have been. It was bad. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It was funny though, it was good. Yeah, really wanted, I felt like, well, let's recreate that, but it wasn't possible. It was such an in the moment thing that you couldn't, it, it's what it was. It was just that, that moment. But as far as how it feels on stage, honestly, it feels great. Yeah. Um, it feels great, you know, it feels great. Because you're, you're in the moment. You know, when you're totally in the moment and you're just committed to the moment, you know, and, and you know, I, I tell people I coach, I, I've been doing a lot of coaching lately, and a and, um, few times I, you know, I, I say to the people I'm working with, your job is to provide a magical experience or surprise to the audience. They don't know what that's going to be. Right. Right. So they have no idea. Uh, and so as long as you end up at a magical surprise, you kind of did it. Right. So it, it may not, you may not get there the way that you want to get there. You may not get there, you know, exactly the way that you intended to get there, but you got there. Right. And, and so, you know, the, the, the journey along the way can be really fun. Uh, and if you've got to improv, you know, Tony Giorgio gave me the best advice I've ever gotten, which is, uh, and I met him very early on 23 years ago when I moved to Los Angeles. And I found myself for three hours sitting in a living room in a, in a house at, off of Mulholland jamming with Tony Giorgio. So wow. I, what is happening, right? And yeah. what he said to me has always stuck with me, which is magic is like jazz. And, and you're kind of doing this, you know, uh, you can't see my feet, but you're doing it. So, uh, you know, you're, 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 magic, magic is like jazz. And, and the audience doesn't always know how, where you're going or how you're going to get there, but you get there. And, and I, I've always kept that in my head. And so I continue just to push forward and find a way to get to that conclusion. So when things go awry or we have mishaps like we had that night, uh, you just go, okay, what am I going to do? And then you accept the silence. You accept right. the moment. And you're in the moment. And the audience, the, all, the entire audience knew that that was a real moment. Oh, of course. Yeah. And I think that's one reason why us as magicians don't or shouldn't say, here's what I'm going to do. You're going to choose a card. I'm going to shuffle it in the deck, and then I'm going to find it in a funny way. Like, you don't, you don't telegraph, and, and a lot of these younger magicians and kind of these magicians before our situation now are doing is, here's what I'm going to do. And then they shuffle the cards. They say, okay, here, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to shuffle the cards, and then here's what's going to happen. You're going to choose a card. Like, shush and just do it. You don't need to commentate every time right. you do something. When? Because there's no surprise, right? You just That's have right. to choose a card. It's lost it. I'm going to find it. Well, where's the element? Now, on the flip side, obviously, when we're seeing David Copperfield vanish the Statue of Liberty, we want to anticipate that because that's impossible, yeah. right? So that's okay. But on the smaller scales, we see it when we're at the castle, when we see potential members say, here's what I'm going to have you do. When there's no, just do it, you know? And that's what's funny about, imagine if you commentated during that routine, here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna have you pick a card. You're gonna put it on this case. Hopefully it doesn't fall on the ground. It's ruined, the whole thing's ruined, you know? <laughs> but if it does. <laughs> right, exactly. Yeah, exactly, yeah. That was what, what, was the, what, was the, what was the first magic trick that you taught somebody to do for camera? Whether it was on Now You See Me or Burt Wonderson or some little Tiny thing, maybe from Colorado oh, or something. Oh, 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 oh! It was David Duchovny. Oh, from X Files. Yeah, yeah. So, and Gillian Anderson. Those are the first two, but the first one was David, right? So, I was on an episode of the X Files back in um, 2000, and uh, I was an actor on that with Ricky Jay, and it was a very important role for me, both magically, but and professionally as an actor, and. Uh, and, uh, and but, but the first day on set, because I was on set for, I think, 10 days, as an, uh, but nine of those days were as an actor. The first day on set, I was on as a consultant. So I... Um, Did you need to consult with Ricky Jay? I feel like that's maybe one guy that doesn't need consulting. No, I just consulted with, uh, with David and... Um, Jillian. And, and, uh, Jillian. So uh, anyway, so... I taught David, now this is cool. David had to vanish a coin. So 
I gave him three options. So I remember going into on the set, right? This is my first time uh, on the set, right? And, and it's, and know, it's I, a I, huge I was, show. That's a big time show back in 2000. Oh, yeah. David Duchovny, is, he's top 10 actor at that time. Yeah. And it's got to be, and you've probably practiced those three coin vanishes for hours before you showed up. I did. So I, and, you know, and, and I was fresh off the bus, right? I was, I was pretty new in LA. And, and uh, so anyway, so uh, lots of stories to tell about that. But I get there and I'm brought into the trailer with David and Jillian. So now I'm in the trailer with David and Jillian. And I'm kind of thinking, what is going on? Right. And, <laughs> and, 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 and I had to teach David how to vanish a coin. So I give him three options, right? I think I gave him a, um, an, uh, an edge palm, I gave him a finger palm, and I showed him the Goshman pinch. The Goshman pinch is not easy. None of those are if you've never done it. That's true. So he says, yeah, let's go with that one, the Goshman pinch. The, the hardest of the three. Perfect. And I'm like, all right. And <laughs> Nailed he pulled it. it off. You know, wow. it was amazing. So, you know, it was a real lesson for me because you, you realize actors, uh, professional actors, you know, they have skills that we don't, that they, they're able just to pick up things, right? In a way that, that non-actors don't necessarily pick up. And, mm -hmm. and he's a smart dude. I mean, he's a smart dude anyway. So he just, he said, let's do it. And he did it. And that day we shot it. Wow. And that's great that he wanted to do it, right? Oftentimes when we uh, get consultant calls and you, I'm yeah. sure they want, they want a hand double or they want a stunt double. They want right. to fake it, but it's great that he wanted to do it for real. And kudos to Hui Papudini. Although a lot of it was a challenge, he wanted to do it all for real, yeah. which was great. Uh, I worked with Ted Danson and he really wanted to do this stuff because you can easily cheat all this stuff. No problem. But yeah. it is kind of, kind of fun. And what's nice is I'm sure David respect, David Duchovny respected that magic or reflect, respected magic that much more because it's not as easy as it looks. No, no, no. What, um, what, is, yeah. your, what, is, what is your hardest routine in your, in your favorite? I know you've got hours of material, but your, let's say your close-up set or your parlor. What's, your, what's, the most hard, what's the hardest trick that you do, although it doesn't look hard when you're doing it? It, the, wow. There's lots, um, right? There's lots. Other than the coloring book of magic. I mean, now we're going to, that's the back burner one. We, we won't say coloring book of magic, but other well, than the coloring what book. What I do with that is I switch hands. I mean, it's my left hand instead of my right. Uh, a little, a little, a little inside. Um, so I, 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 uh, you know what? I, it's, that's a hard, you know, well, honestly, slow motion aces, Jennings slow motion aces is. Yeah. Very you know, hard. Yeah. It's hard. Um, my unmatrix routine, which is my four coin matrix where the coins vanish at the end. Um, there's, you know, there's work. A lot on. of work. Yeah. Nice. Uh, yeah. So, yeah, I mean, so, so you mentioned your magic coaching and of course there's lots of our friends are doing magic zoom lessons and here's how to do a bunch of magic tricks. Is there a difference between your magic coaching and magic, a magic lesson? Yeah. Um, yeah, I would say there is, you know, I'm, I'm really, it's been, it's been really gratifying to do these coaching sessions. And what I've been finding with my students, in some cases, we're talking about method and we're talking, you know, well, we're always talking about method to some degree, but uh, you know, when we're sitting down and we're saying, instead of this handling, use this handling, or this, instead of this uh, technique or, or flight, use this one, or, you know, that's absolutely happening. But also what seems to be common in a lot of the, co the coaching that I'm doing is that we are talking about character, scripting, story, plot, structure, psychology. We're building acts from beginning to end. We're finding our through line. Uh, and it's so much fun. And I'm working with so many different types of performers that come at it from, with different experiences, different right. intentions, uh, different end goals that they're looking for. And, cool. and we're, But what's interesting is how many people want work in those areas. And, and, my um, my wheelhouse. So you know, we're, in some cases, we're we're diving in on a very emotional level too. When we're talking about character and we're finding out, uh, you know, we're we're diving deep and helping people, you know, find find what their character is and how to bring that out. And so, you know, we're not. I'm not. These lessons are not just. Hey, we're going to learn the twists and the aces today. It's 
we're going to work on everything, you know, and, yeah. and sometimes, that, sometimes that's a discussion that, that takes place prior to even getting to a trick, right? Right, uh, right. It usually starts that way. And then, and then we'll start to bring in the tricks and we'll start to bring in the routining and the, the structure of the whole act and, and we'll do all yeah, that. Yeah, because there's, there's so much more that to buying a magic trick or learning a magic trick or reading a trick. Yeah, just because you can read it and you know the moves, make it interesting. Why do you, I mean, Rob Zabrecki is a perfect example of a character, right? Him off and him on stage, those are two different people where I think you and I are kind of the same person in real life and on stage, but a character is something super fun to, to create too. I mean, sometimes it just comes of doing it and you just figure out this is I'm the goofball guy or I'm the creepy Rob Zabrecki guy but yeah I mean does somebody often bring you a magic trick and say okay here's my trick can you help me make it better not the trick but the before middle and after of the routine right that's yeah and that's what we're working on that is a a lot of what we're working on and you know speaking of the character you know worked with uh, in different ways right in some cases I'm working with people on making characters. Uh, but in most cases, uh, we're, we're talking about character as, as it is the human being that's on stage there, you know, and not being a Mr. Misto or a Zabrecki or a, um, right. you know, not, not, not going down that path, right? Of, you know, or just, you know, Sylvester, you know. Right, that's my, that's my phone. Uh, I'll hang up on them. Uh, yes, exactly. But yeah, and, and that's been really gratifying and fun to explore that and you know people ask me what my character is on stage and where I've come to now in my life is that my character is the person I say this often my character is the person I wish I could be in real life so oh. it is not exactly me um, but it's also me deep down you know and right. I I could be you know the goofy guy I could wish I could kneel on the table uh, you know <laughs> some David Williamson kind of stuff yeah so, you know, but, but the, the, the character in, my, in the performance allows me to do that and get away with it. And, uh, but it's really here, you know, it's still part of who I am. And so it's about finding the, the ups and downs, the ups and flows, right. you know, the, 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 uh, the symphony that allows different levels to come out uh, through that character choice. So it's, it, I'm having a ball doing it. Uh, That's and, cool. And it's, it's something I've always done, uh, but it's not something I've ever pushed. It's a word of mouth. And during this quarantine, I decided to push it. And so now it's an active part of my website. Uh, you, can, you can set up times. We're, we're sessions. I've got a session today at 1 o'clock. Uh, I've got another session tomorrow. You know, so these things are happening, and it's really been gratifying. And it's just, it's just JonathanLevitt.com, and from there they can navigate to whatever else they want to look at. Yeah, if you go to JonathanLevitt.com uh, forward slash magic coaching or just JonathanLevitt.com, there's a, there's a link to magic coaching. Uh, so yeah, it's totally there. You can book, you can book a session with me right online and, uh, it's awesome. It's awesome. Yeah. Well, very good. Well, before, before we get out of here, I, I have a lightning round for you. I'm going to oh. put a minute on, I'm going to put a minute on my clock okay. and uh, you got to answer as fast as you can. The next couple of questions. Are you ready? Yeah. <sighs> Nothing like a little morning lightning round. All right. Uh, here we go. Uh, who was the last magician that fooled you? You last night. <laughs> who who was the last magician that you fooled? Oh, uh-huh. uh huh. I have no idea. <laughs> <laughs> what is the what is the longest uh, amount of time you've worked on a magic trick? What, what is the longest I've worked on a trick? What's the longest? Yeah, what's the longest amount of time you've ever worked on a single magic trick before? It was ready for an audience. Fifteen years. Would you rather go to dinner with Steve Carell or Steve Buscemi? Uh, what, I, can we do both of them? Can, can I go? Sure. To, they're both amazing human beings. And that was something I, 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 I was so happy to find out. Steve Carell might be the nicest person in, the, in, in Hollywood. And, and wow. Is, 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 the, is like this gentle, sweet, kind soul. And uh, I enjoyed both of them immensely. I will say that. If, if you're going to arm wrestle Tony Clark, who would win? <laughs> Tony's, no, he's get, that's all I'm going to say. <laughs> he's getting up there. I think you got out. If you had one superpower, what would it be? Uh, to fly. Del Taco or Taco Bell? 
Taco Bell. Yes. Very good. Maybe I should show that afterwards. All right. That's it. Some crazy people out there see Del Taco. Uh, all right, man. Well, thank you so much for coming on. Go do the magic coaching. Keep in touch. We're, we're always talking to each other at least once a week, and we have lots of fun stories to share both before and after this. Tell Casey I said hello, and I'll talk to you soon. Hey, thanks for having me on, my friend. Thank you. See ya. So great. Uh, that's Jonathan Levitt. He is a fantastic guy. If you've never seen him work, he's really, really funny. Uh, he was downplaying his character. I don't think it's a character. I think it's him. Uh, we've, uh, we've worked at simultaneously at the castle, and uh, he's great. He's really, really fun. And that time on stage at Theater West, I'll never forget it. It was great. Hey, uh, come back tomorrow. Uh, we're going to learn some magic. That's going to be fun. Bring a deck of cards with you. I'm going to teach you guys a card trick. I haven't done a card trick in a while. So bring a deck of cards with you. I'll teach you guys a card trick tomorrow. Uh, for episode 44, and then uh, Wednesday, May 20th, we got our buddy Justin Willman back on the show. His Netflix for uh, Special Magic for Humans 3 launched on Friday, so come back Wednesday for that. Come back tomorrow for that, and don't forget, every day before you go to bed, think of something to look forward to the following day. I'll see you again. Thank you so much for visiting us here at Magic Up Alive at 11. That was Jonathan Levitt, and we'll see you guys on Monday.